Hi everybody, so today I'm bringing you another sort of quick tips video. One of the most popular questions I get a lot is how can I become a better dancer? Do you have any tips to improve my dancing? And I know we're all in a mentality where we want a quick fix. Like, can we do this by tomorrow? Wouldn't that be nice? Um, and so today I want to bring you some tips for how to improve your dancing and how to improve in ballet quickly. Now, of course, I want to start by saying the key to ballet <laughs> is hard work and putting in the time. You know, you can't sort of sit there and hope to become a great dancer and become a great dancer. It takes the effort, it takes the day-to-day -day class, it takes the cross training, it takes a lot of work. So the number one tip in improving in ballet is putting in the work. You can't have anybody do it for you. You can't wish it. I, you know, you can watch my videos all you want, but, and I can give you all the tips in the world, but it's your job to implement them. So obviously, while this is a quick fix video, ballet, there's no quick fix. You have to do the work yourself. No one else can do it for you. So that's the first thing. But here are some things you can do today to start seeing results faster. Number one, I've said this a thousand million times, don't cheat in class. I know you want to get your legs up. I know you want to turn out. But the number one way to improve strength in ballet is not cheating. And of course, I have my bar with no bar videos. I'll do some more soon for you. Um, you know, let, let go of the bar. See where you are. <laughs> See if you're leaning on it, particularly dancers in point class. When you're in point shoes, I see a lot of hanging on the bar, allowing the bar to do the work for you because, you know, especially when you're first starting point, you do face the bar. So make sure you are not cheating. Use your natural turnout. Don't jam the heels forward. That does nothing for you. Number one way to improve your turnout is by using it, not by jamming your stretches or, you know, forcing it. Be very, very conscious of am I lifting the hip to get the leg higher? Am I whacking my alignment out to get the leg higher? You have to use correct placement in order to see results in ballet, in order to get stronger, in order for those muscles to start firing. So the number one way to do that is to do bar with no bar. Again, I will link both of those, the beginner and the intermediate one, intermediate advanced in the card, and I promise I will film more for you. Okay, tip number two is a way not to get overwhelmed with everything you have to work on. What I would suggest, particularly if you're in a summer program, particularly if you're in intensive or a workshop or just in your day-to-day -day classes, pick one thing to focus on either that day or that week. So for example, okay, today I'm gonna focus on my turnout. Today I'm gonna focus on my port de bras. This week I'm gonna focus on alignment. That way, especially in an intensive setting, especially in a setting where you have a thousand classes and everybody's telling you everything and teachers are this and that, it can get overwhelming, but it gives you a focus. I see so many students get so frustrated because they're trying to do arm and head and thing and thing and turn on weight, my feet. So pick one thing. You don't have to tell anybody what it is, but pick one thing and say, okay, today I'm really going to focus on my turnout. Obviously, you still have to do proper port de bras. Obviously, you still want to give your all to your turns. But having a solitary focus really, really helps. And I like doing that, teachers, FYI. I like doing that um, for my online classes. My regular students know oftentimes I'll have a theme of the day. And we will focus solely on turnout. We will focus solely on port de bras. That way, it doesn't get overwhelming. They start to see the implementation of other corrections as we go. But it gives them a focus and it gives them a singular thing to start working on so they can personally see improvement. So try to maybe try that if you're a teacher. Students, pick a focus for, for the day, for the week, for a few days. One of the things about improving is repetition. And so the more you use the turnout muscles, the more you find the turnout muscles, the more they're going to improve. Same with port bra, same with extensions. So have a focus. Which brings me to the third thing. A lot of improvement in ballet is your mental state. If you're sitting there hating your life and hey, I'm a terrible dancer and I can't do anything, I guarantee you the turns aren't going to work. I use this analogy all the time. It's like you're in the back of class, you do the most glorious pirouette and no one sees it. Yeah, it's because you're not overthinking it. So make sure you're not, you know, it's, this is easier said than done. Try not to be so hard on yourself because the harder you are and harder you are on yourself, the more you put yourself down, the more you're like, I can't do this, the less you're going to improve. Improvement is all about a mental state. 
So if you're in that state of, okay, you know what, that wasn't good, but I can do better, I can try again, or I'm working on this, you're going to improve five times faster than if you beat yourself up about it. Trust me. It's like when you have a teacher that you just don't like and it's negative and it's and they're screaming at you, no matter how hard you try, you're just going to have a bad class. It's the same with yourself. The more you scream at yourself, the more you put pressure on yourself, the more it's like, oh, why can't I do this? You know, the worse it's going to be. So get out of that crazy mentality. Get in a little bit better frame of mind. Because let me tell you, students, from a teacher's perspective, we don't reward a student who storms off and I can't do this. And, uh, you know, that sort of attitude where you think the teacher is like, oh, they're frustrated. We just get annoyed. I've seen it. I've seen other teachers will start to ignore the students who are having a little pity party in the corner and who just, oh, I can't do anything. And oh, like it's a, it's a major turnoff. So we don't we we know there is no possible way we are getting through to you in that moment. So don't do that for attention. Don't do that to try and make everybody feel sorry for you and in a false modesty kind of thing. It doesn't work. It doesn't work from our standpoint and it doesn't help you. So if a pirouette combination goes badly, that's all right. Okay, figure out what went wrong. Figure out how to fix it next time as opposed to beating yourself up and having a pity party and then the rest of the class is shot. You know, forget the turn combination. Move on to Petit Allegro. Find something good out of that. So a big part of improvement is your mental state. Fourth thing, easier said than done. Don't rely and look at yourself constantly in the mirror because when you do that, your a palm all gets off, your alignment gets off, right? No, full, full a palm all, full head. Get used to what that feels like. Because that's how you prepare yourself to dance a variation, to be on the stage, to really dance. You're not going to be on stage like this, right? So it throws off your alignment more than you realize. It throws off your apom all more than you realize. One of the best things that I've done recently with my own dancing is, is trying not to, like when I do bar, when I'm teaching, I'm looking at my students. I'm not looking at myself, you know, feeling it. There are great benefits to simply feeling your technique as opposed to relying on the mirror. You've got to know what it feels like. You've got to know what proper quasi feels like without doing weird things in your head, right? You've got to know what écarté is. It's not this. Because what happens is, for example, I judge YAGP, and there are a lot of dancers who don't quite know what to do with their eyes now. It's like, because they're so used to looking in the mirror, you get on stage and it's like, whoa, it's a whole different thing. Because using your eyes in different ways also challenges your balance. If you're fixated on one point, it's easier to balance than if you actually are using your eyes. And so it actually takes more core strength to use your eyes. So make sure you're actually doing proper a palm all, proper port de bras and not relying on the mirror because it's gonna throw you off later. One of my favorite things to do with students is have them face the back wall, going across the floor. We don't look at the mirror. All right, face the other way. At New York City Ballet, every single complete, which is the full run in the studio, we face the back. So you get used to not looking at the mirror, not looking for the girl in front of you or looking in the mirror to see who you're behind. Not looking in the mirror is a great way to start improving your own dancing faster. Yes, you need to see your lines and see what they look like, but that brings me to the next tip. As frustrating as it sometimes can be and as depressing as it sometimes can get, start filming yourself. Because no matter how much you look in the mirror, you cannot see what your pirouette looks like simply by looking in the mirror. If you really want to get stronger and you really want to improve your dancing, put your ego aside and start filming your bar. Start filming your variations and self-analyze. This goes back to not letting it throw you for a loop. But you need to see what you look like not in the mirror, in real time. So set up your phone. Phones have great cameras now, either this way or this way, really doesn't matter. I mean, this is the proper way for YouTube. Start filming yourself, use proper a pommel, and then go back and watch it. You'll be surprised instead of trying to see it in the mirror. 
Um, another great tip, you guys, for pirouettes, again, highly depressing, but this is what I'll do with students who I video coach with, who purchase my video coaching pass. I will slow-mo it for them. Use the little slow-mo uh, section of the camera on your camera app if you have an iPhone, or you can even record something and then slow it down. And you can really see your pirouette technique. You can really see your transition technique. Again, highly depressing, but it'll really, part of improving you guys is putting the ego aside and going, okay, what's really happening? So set up your slow-mo, do a pirouette, and I guarantee you, you're gonna be like, huh. You might not realize you're twisting, you might not realize you're falling backwards or your porta bras off. Slow-mo is amazing for checking your own technique and normal filming as well, because you get to see what you look like without changing your alignment in the mirror with proper mall and dancing. So start filming yourself. Put the ego aside, look at it, and, and self-improve from there. Particularly right now, if you're not in the studio, it's, it's really helpful. Okay, last tip, because I don't want to overwhelm you. Honestly, you guys, take one day at a time. Rome was not built in a day. Olympians don't win gold medals overnight. It's the same thing for you. You're not going to be, tw you know, twice the dancer in two days. It takes time. So in order to improve fast, take your time. It takes longer to rush. Andrew Vayette said that to me when I was first doing carousel with him. And I saw him recently. We judged together at YAGP, and I told him that. And he was like, yeah, I, I remember telling you that. I remember, you know, because what would happen was we would be partnering, and I would take him longer to figure out what I was doing in order to fix the lift where if I had just gone into it properly and gone into it slowly he would have known right where I was and we could have done the lift and would have taken half the time it's the same thing for all of you it takes longer to rush so take one day at a time proper technique don't cheat and don't get so caught up in a deadline. I have to be amazing by, huh? Because what happens is I see so many dancers try and wait for things until they're perfect or wait to audition until they're perfect or wait to audition, send an audition video until it's perfect. It's never going to be perfect, right? Don't wait until it's perfect because it's never going to be. So take your time one day at a time. That's one of the great things about being a dancer is you can fix it tomorrow. We're not Olympians. You don't work four years of your life or years of your life for 90 seconds on one day. I always come back to that analogy because it amazes me. It's like the gymnasts. A vault takes eight seconds. You work your entire life for eight seconds. And if you're on, great. If you're off, whoop, no gold medal for you. Can you imagine? So that's one of the great things about being a dancer is it's a daily process. It's a daily work. It's a constant work for improvement. Some of the biggest stars on the planet, Marinella Nunez, does bar and plies and tondus every single day. It's a never-ending cycle. It's a never-ending thing. You're constantly going to be working to improve. So don't get so caught up in, I have to be good in two weeks, one day at a time. If you put that deadline on yourself and you put that pressure on yourself and I have to be amazing by two weeks, you're, it's going to backfire. So take it one day at a time, do your best, don't cheat, put the ego aside, be honest with your dancing, but don't let it throw you for a loop because it's being a dancer, whether you are professional or not, it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing you know, journey, it's an ongoing struggle, um, and you're going to constantly be trying to improve every single day of your life. So it takes longer to rush, one day at a time. And that's so hard to deal with, and it's so hard to realize, but once you do, life gets so much better, I promise you, you guys. So if you have any quick tips, leave me a comment. If you have a video request, I said I would do those bars, I will do some more bars. Let me know in the comments. I sort of go in waves on YouTube, you guys, so I want to pick it back up, <laughs> you know, just scheduling and timing and such. So if you have a video request, let me know in the comments. If you missed the Don Q dream scene, I sort of whip out all three solos. It's right down there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.